I spoke on this before, the, the borderline narcissist dynamic. And I want to be very clear that narcissists are toxic and dangerous for everybody. And there's a lot of people that start to experience BPD symptoms as a result of the relationship. But there are certain types of borderline personalities that when they commingle with the weaker covert male narcissists can end up ruining those people almost permanently. Like the reason being is that like, you know, many uh, borderline women are very sexual, very beautiful, very uh, alluring, very attractive, very outwardly expressive, and they love bomb. But they're also sensitive to the bullshit, you know, and so they react very harshly and intensely. And so they can counteract a lot of the bullshit that narcissists could get away with and create boundaries based on like harsh reactive punishment. And so the reactive abuse from a borderline can put a narcissist into like a shame spiral, narcissistic injury to where they become pitiful, begging, like literally so desperate. But when that hot borderline dumps that narcissist, that narcissist can reach an all time low, like a low they've never experienced before. And in some cases become so obsessed and fixated on that one person, they're unable to recover their identity. They're unable to restore themselves to any semblance of confidence because that, that obsession that they have with that ultimate supply that came in the form of the love bombing and the, uh, the splitting. So the, the borderline splitting, especially if they're the harsh, angry, malignant type that's punitive and can just decimate somebody uh, on the spot, that's so intense because it speaks to both aspects, meaning that having you like gave them this huge social boost, like they got this super hot, like beautiful, attractive, love bombing goddess. And then at the same time, when you put them in that shame spiral and just hammer them, you know, you're triggering that worthless part of them too and giving them a ton of supply by confirming their pitifulness and which is something that actually they enjoy. It sounds crazy, but you see like when they get confirmation of their pitiful nature, their failure as a man, their weakness and all the things that that type of borderline can conjure and trigger in them, that's a lot of supply. Because when they feel pitiful like that, it lets them off the hook for the big discrepancy between their fake future CEO self and this pitiful worthless man that some coverts enjoy like masochists. Okay, they can be masochistic. And so when you hammer them and trash them and, and humiliate them and, and belittle them and make them weak and they don't, you know, you, you know, like you, you just make them so small, some of them react to that positively. Maybe it sounds crazy, but they could like, oh, okay, baby, whatever you want. And so in that context, certain borderline personalities can have a lot of control over narcissists. But see, borderlines can also be equally unstable too. And so at the conclusion of this relationship, what there is to know as that type of borderline, like if you have that narcissist weak and he's like, oh, might hurt himself and, you know, like trying to really appeal to you with the, the lovey-dovey desperate stuff. Don't go for it. <laughs> Keep him right where he's at. Not even breadcrumbing him. Never, ever rebuild him. Do not rebuild him. Don't do it. Because you're actually doing the world a favor. I'm going to tell you <laughs> that my mom, she has all the power over my dad. My dad was once this proud dude. He had a boat. He could go to Catalina. He had Cadillacs. He had a career. He, after the divorce, could never come back couldn't hold down a job you know now he lives like as a parasite like i hate to say that that's my dad but since his 40s up until 80 he has been a fraction of a man and just like a little child now like he shows up just desperate for someone to just talk to him and he gets nothing from her like she looks at him with no respect, like he's, he's might as well not even be a person. Like it's like an insect or just, Oh, Hey, you know, like, and then he'll try to like Hoover with just, you know, reminiscent conversations. And he's really nice. I'm going to tell you, my dad was a monster, a monster. Okay. Almost a malignant. Okay. Like the worst kind of abusive 
guy. He could be a nightmare. My dad is castrated. Like, I'm telling you, this was a social favor because my dad, I highly doubt that he could, he could have, like, he became so weak as a person that he could never recover the confidence to even try to assert being better than anybody. Like, it, he, I'm telling you right now that there are covert narcissists that are homeless. <laughs> like, like male narcissists, like the covert type that parasitite off of women that, you know, they, they can get broken and never recover because what ends up happening is they burn everybody out. Like as a man, there's only so many victim stories that'll fly. Like you can't keep doing that shit. Like I'm telling you, like we have homeless epidemics, but I'm going to tell you straight out that there are a lot of homeless men that are just covert narcissists that, that reach the, the end of being a parasite that they're no longer attractive. Now they've lost a couple teeth. Like they, they cannot come back. There's no amount of support They're They're done. Dunzo. And so what I'm saying is that, you know, take your power, ladies, be on your healing journey, recover. And if you got that narcissist weak like that, leave them. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. If he could, he would destroy you. And if he's trying to get you back, it's because he wants to try to prove to himself that he's better than you anyway. And make no mistake, like all that, that those threats and hurting and unaliving, it's it's all manipulative. It's all sick. But I'm, I'm saying that the covert variety, like for a lot of these people, they may have had some success in their life, but for a lot of them, they can experience a narcissistic injury that's like the final, final one. Because they get to a place where they're no longer suave, they're not smooth, they don't have the resources anymore to try to uh, use money or, or, or be able to change someone's life, you know. And so they become unappealing and unattractive to women. That there's a point where they, the demographic of their appeal, you see like someone on the come up in their 20s, 30s like you can buy into their bullshit but when you reach a certain age it's like you know the victim story stopped working like you can't sit here and have somebody pay for your your acting class in art school at 50 you know like you can't future fake anymore like it is what it is like you're broke you have no career you have no credit nobody wants you you're useless you're worthless and so the type of woman or person that they're going to get stuck with, I will tell you, will be more malignant and toxic than them. Like a lot of these men, if they're not going to be homeless, like they're going to end up just misery loves company. And so I'm just saying, like, I'm not saying that these are ideal relationships. I, I want to clarify, like, it's just that. Certain types of borderlines, because of splitting, it's like in the re-idealization, like these types of toxic people, even narcissist on narcissist, like two narcissists, despite what people may think, can have long-term relationships that are on the surface successful. And by successful, I mean that they endure time. It doesn't mean that they're good. It doesn't mean that they're healthy. It doesn't mean that they're good for children. It doesn't mean anything other than they can present like normal people. Like, I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of marriages out there that don't work in a conventional, healthy sense, but that they endure, they sustain. And they they do. Like, I'm telling you that, like, a lot of these pick-me girls and a lot of these uh, alpha males, like, they're narcissists. Like, narcissists date narcissists. They do. They they team up. They They partner with each other. Like... In business, narcissists work with narcissists. Like you could have whole sales teams that are all narcissists, all coverts. And then the company owner is a malignant or sociopath. And then the, the manager is a more dominant narcissist. So like socially, narcissists have like a hierarchy depending on the, the expression of it. So we tend to look at it like overt and covert. But all of them share the same self-loathing, shame and grandiosity it's just that they all have different skill sets and levels of intelligence and talent. And so you could have whole companies that are nothing but a den of thieves and narcissists, like criminal mentality people, organized crime, gangs, and things like that. Like narcissists are everywhere but uh, and fully integrated. But borderlines, if you...